These days, improved weather forecasting coupled with thorough pre-flight planning usually allows us to make solid, go, no-go decisions well in advance of a planned flight. But what about those situations where the decision goes down to the wire? In this video, we'll look at some things to consider when the weather complicates your go, no-go decision. When conditions are marginal, either compared to regulations or your own personal minimums, the decision to launch, postpone, or cancel a flight can be a difficult one. In terms of weather information, we're looking to answer two main questions. First, how closely do actual conditions match what's been forecast over the preceding hours and days? If things are playing out as expected, that's a plus. Though it's important to keep in mind that forecasts, even if basically correct, are often inexact or lack the resolution to account for very specific locations. Fairly frequently, the weather will be lower than forecast. You know, maybe at the precise moment that you arrive at the airport, there may be one low-hanging cloud over the airport, and you think, okay, I should be breaking out any minute, and you end up at minimums and you don't see anything. The second major question is, how volatile is the situation? In other words, how likely are things to change when you're en route? Under the right circumstances, it's possible for weather elements like flight visibility and convective activity to change rapidly. If it's getting cooler and your temperature is approaching the dew point, it's possible for it to drop from 10 miles to nothing in a relatively short amount of time, uh, especially in the summertime. Um, even if there are no th thunderstorms showing up on radar, um, if you're starting to get you know, little pop-ups, little, little bits of rain here and there, there's a good chance that over the next couple of hours they may develop into a, a major situation that you know, it could be something that would affect your flight. Keep in mind, too, that little things can have a cumulative effect. Just because there isn't any one particular aspect of the weather or of the flight that, that throws up a big red flag and says, hey, you know, this is definitely a no-go, if everything is looking kind of marginal, you know, maybe that's your big, big red flag that says, hey, you know, maybe today's not the day. If you're a computer briefing type of person, this may be a good time to actually talk to flight service simply because it allows for a dialogue. Every weather forecast is not going to be perfect. So when you're getting a briefing, ask the questions about, well, if, if the forecast doesn't go exactly as described or as expected, what's, what's the next, next most likely scenario? Or how might it evolve? Then you've got a decision point in your head to go back and say, OK, I, I knew about this scenario as being potential. It looks like it is going to happen. And I've already made the decision that when I saw these clues, I was going to turn around or deviate or do, some, do something else. So, you've done your pre-flight weather gathering, and while conditions are generally in line with the forecast, the weather is right at the edge of your comfort zone. And there are indications that things may be changing for the worse. This is where the difficult questions start. How much worse is it likely to get? How much worse is that than what you've experienced before? Did you feel comfortable in that situation? How long ago was it? Do you feel pressured to go now? What are the costs if you don't go? What are the dangers if you do? You're flying over the weekend and you need to be home Sunday night so you can go to work Monday morning. Um, you really are motivated to, to make that flight Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. And if the weather's not looking that good, a lot of pilots, that's when they start looking for that one forecast that maybe diverges from the predominant thinking that, that gives them some th inkling that maybe, oh, maybe I can make it, maybe I can make it. And then they get up there and they can't make it and they run into trouble. And it's, it's hard to make that cost-benefit decision, I think. Often, pilots try to have it both ways by going up to take a look. Sometimes that works out, but it can also be a trap for the unwary. Are you sure you can get back on the ground if you need to? What if conditions are worse than you think? Do you know that you'll be able to control the aircraft? If you're devoting 100% of your attention to aircraft control, will you be able to deal with other problems that might arise? In many cases, the pressure release valve is a simple call for a second opinion. Find a, a local pilot, find a local flight instructor, and, and get their opinion on it. If the instructor says, hey, listen, you know, you probably shouldn't go up today, okay, you know, that'll, that'll, I think, be a confidence boost for the pilot saying, yeah, okay, you know what, this is a good decision, this is the right decision. It's been said that general aviation is a 90% solution. In the grand scheme of things, about 10% of the time, 
it's just not going to work out. General aviation flying requires flexibility. You have no business conducting a flight from A to B, and I don't even care the distance, if you don't have the options and opportunity to delay a day, to push a day, to divert here or divert there. There are ways to reduce the pressures, both real and imagined, that can torture us in these situations. One of them is being open with passengers about the realities of GA flying and the very real possibility that plans may change. Anything that you can do along the way to educate them to that fact, that just takes one additional stressor out of the equation. We never have to make a flight. Our minds tend to inflate the consequences of cancellation, and most people, non-pilots or not, are more understanding than we give them credit for. But all that aside, in many cases, go and no-go are not the only options. As pilots, we sometimes tend to fixate on a particular plan to the exclusion of other options. But in many cases, it's possible to make adjustments for less than ideal conditions. You know, if you're running your numbers the day before and say, hey, you know, it's going to be too hot at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, we're not going to be able to make it out, or it's going to be thunderstorms at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, maybe I don't want to fly, you know, you don't necessarily have to push the flight to another day, maybe just to another hour. Likewise, in some cases, a change of route can still get you where you need to go. Both situations call for caution, however. What if you delay, but the weather doesn't change on schedule? Could a delay cause other issues? For example, having to fly over the mountains at night? Or, if you go a different direction, will you be able to carry enough fuel? If the weather problem area is fairly localized, you may be able to make the trip in stages. For example, landing within 100 miles of the final destination airport and renting a car from there. Or, you may not have to cancel at all. Think of flying like a team sport. It's always possible to get advice, and in some cases direct assistance from others. The next time you make a no-go decision, not complete a flight, consider some other options. Consider another pilot that might be making the same flight, that's at the airport that same day. Maybe you could ride along as a passenger. Maybe that person could be a passenger with you or even flying left seat. But that's the way you know, we continue to gain uh, that practical, valuable experience that is going to get us to a situation where we are more comfortable with varied flight conditions. Finally, if you end up staying on the ground, use the situation as an opportunity to further your real-world weather education. There's still the opportunity to watch the weather develop, even meeting with a flight instructor to talk about the conditions of the day, what had been forecast, how did this play out? In general, we should do our best to avoid last-minute go-no-go decisions. Yes, there will be times when making a no-go call two or three days in advance means missing out on flyable weather. But overall, the positives, less stress and easier contingency planning, more than outweigh the negatives. Still, there will always be occasions when there's no avoiding a last-minute call. That tends to complicate matters, but with good planning and a certain amount of self-knowledge, we can largely avoid the weather situations that lead to accidents. <laughs>